viewers. Today I'm going to be working on this bike and making a video that has been requested a bunch of times and that is how to replace an old style cottered crank set and bottom bracket with a newer style square taper bottom bracket and crank set. Okay, there's a caveat to this. Bikes, older bikes that were made in the Raleigh factory in Nottingham, England, this will not apply. This video will not apply to those. Um, Older Raleigh bikes with the cotton cranks had, um, they used the uh, Raleigh standard threading in the bottom bracket. It was 26 threads per inch. Most other bikes use 24 threads per inch. And that's more, the, the real common size now is 24 threads per inch. So um, if you have an older Raleigh uh, a bike that was made in the Raleigh factory, and it may not necessarily be a Raleigh, um, but if it was made in Nottingham, England, it's got the cutter cranks, there's a good chance that the uh, threading in there is the Raleigh Standard, 26 threads per inch. And it, you can change the bottom bracket on there, but there's a whole other method that you need to do to do that. And I'm hoping to make a video on that, but that's not this video. Now one thing to look for is if the bottom bracket has this type of like little fitting on both sides, on both the adjustable cup and the fixed cup, then there's a good chance that it's 26 threads per inch. If it's only on the adjustable side that has this type of fitting, then it could be 24 threads per inch. So you just want to use a little bit of caution um, when uh, doing this, that this video does not apply to the old style Raleigh bikes with the Raleigh standard threading in them. Now before I remove these cranks, I need to measure the uh, the chain line because when I install the new cranks, I want to make sure I have the uh, chain rings spaced out from the frame about the same distance as these are. So what I want to do is, generally the chain line is measured on a double, is measured from like right between the uh, the two chain rings. If it's a triple, then you measure from the uh, the center of the middle uh, chain ring. So I'll try to get this uh, ruler here right between the two chain rings and then look in there and it looks like it's about 42 millimeters from the uh, center of the uh, the uh, seat tube here the seat po um, to the uh, right between the two uh, chain rings. And I can also just measure here just right against the small one here and it looks like that's around 36, 37 millimeters. So I have those two measurements here to uh, judge to whether I get the new chain rings and the spindle length. There's going to be probably a little bit of trial and error um, with the new uh, spindle to make sure I get the right length so that these are spaced out right. Okay, now I'm ready to uh, remove the cranks here. And there's a little uh, nut here on the cotter pin. So I'll remove this and I'm using an 11 millimeter on there. Yours might be different depending on your bike. But so I'm just gonna remove this nut. Like that and the washer. So now what I need to do is drive this cotter pin out. And so what I'm gonna do is I need to put something on the bottom that it uh, uh, we'll have room to uh, go out. So I'm going to take, it's a 3 8 inch socket, so I'm just going to put that under there against the uh, the cotter pin like that. And then I'm going to uh, put a board underneath there and so that the weight of the bike is actually resting on the board there. Um, and try to get this wedged under there. And so that'll give me something to pound down against the pin but allow the pin to move out. And then I have a big iron bar here and a little hand sledge. So I'm going to use this to pound that uh, cotter pin down and hopefully knock that cotter pin out. And it looked like it uh, moved out of there. And so I got the cotter pin out of that uh, crank. And so now this crank should come off here. Okay, let's see if I tap it in from behind and see if I can turn it up. Oh, there we go. Get it to come off. And I got it off on that side. 
Okay, so now I'm ready to do the other side here, and the other side is going to basically be done the same way. I'm going to remove this nut, which is still 11 millimeter here, and so I'll pull this nut off and the washer, set that aside. Then I've got my socket here, and it doesn't matter what size, just as long as it fits over the end of the cotter pin there. And then I'll get my board wedged under here. That's where the, it's actually resting on there. Well, I'm not having a lot of luck getting this thing out of there, so I'm going to drill it. So I'm going to use a center punch here and see if I can put like a little divot here. And then use my drill to start drilling down through the uh, cotter uh, pin to see if I can uh, ease up some, uh, release some of the pressure holding it in there. Go to a bigger bit. And go to it a bigger bit. And now let's see if I can tap this thing out. You have to seem to be moving there. Okay, so I got that pin out now. And now I'll just remove this off, this crank arm. And this one came off much easier than the other side did. Okay, the hard part's done. So now I want to remove this and, okay, the move the lock ring here and then the adjustable cup seems to be coming off as well. And then I can use this pin spanner here to uh, remove this if it's not, not loose enough to loosen by hand. Like that. And then I can pull this whole spindle out here like that. And it's looking pretty ugly in there. Now I thought I was going to have a fight with this uh, fixed cup over here, but it's actually loose. So I can go ahead and just unscrew this here. Uh, if not, you know, I mean, you have to use a tool and this can be a real battle sometimes getting the uh, fix cup off. But no battle today, it's coming right off. Like that. Now I want to take the time to uh, clean the bottom bracket shell out. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, citrus greaser here. Spray that in there and just clean it all out. There's a bunch of dirt and just gunk in there. Clean out all the old grease and dirt. Like that. And it's also a good opportunity just to clean around on the frame uh, where it's hard to clean with uh, the crank set on there like that too. Okay, so here's the spindle and the cups that I took off the uh, bike there. And I have like a little thread gauge here. It's 24 threads per inch. And then that fits on there just perfectly. Those teeth just mesh in. So these are definitely 24 uh, threads per inch on here. Okay, to order a, a new bottom bracket, like a square taper one, I need to measure the uh, current bottom bracket to figure out what size to order. So first I'm going to measure the width of the shell here. And... That looks to be about, uh, looks like it's measuring about 67 millimeters, which should actually be 68. 68, 70, 73 are like the most common shell width. So I'm going to call that uh, 68 millimeters wide. Okay, so now I need to figure out the spindle length that I'm going to uh, need. Um, this is the cottered uh, spindle that came out of there. And what I want to do is measure from like the center of here where the, uh, the cotters went in, the pins. So I'm going to measure center to center 
and just get a rough measurement there. And that looks to be about 113. So I'm going to try start off with a 113 millimeter spindle length and see how that fits. That should be pretty close, but I can always go up or down from there, go up to like 115 or down to 110, but uh, 113 should be roughly close, and I'll see how that works. Okay, now using those uh, numbers, the uh, 68 and the 113, I ordered a uh, bottom bracket, the Shimano UN26 68 by 113 square taper, and it's a sealed cartridge bottom bracket, so it's set up for a 68mm uh, wide uh, shell, and the spindle length is 113, and this is also just the, the normal, standard, more common uh, British threading. Now, if you have a vintage uh, French or vintage Italian bike, the uh, those have different threading on the bottom bracket. So you're going to need to order a bottom bracket specifically for those. Uh, they have a uh, right hand threaded uh, fixed cup, where the the more common uh, standard British threading, they they have a left hand threaded fixed cup. Um, and again, if you have a vintage Raleigh uh, with the 26 uh, threads per inch in the bottom bracket. Uh, you're not going to be able to just go out and buy a new bottom bracket. They don't make them for that. Okay, so I'm going to install this bottom bracket here. I'm going to use a little bit of grease and just put a thin coating of grease around the threads on the fixed cup here. And then I'm going to thread this in. And then this is, uh, on this bike, this is left-hand threaded. So to screw it in, it's going to turn in counterclockwise. And I want to make sure that I don't cross thread it. There we go, because it, it should turn in pretty smoothly. And use my uh, sealed cartridge bottom bracket tool here. Uh, this one here, it's by Park Tool. It's a uh, BBT2. And I think they, they have a newer version of this, a BBT22, uh, I think is the newest version of it. And so now I'm going to tighten this in with my ratchet wrench here. I could use a torque wrench, but I usually just kind of tighten them in. You just want it real tight. <clears throat> okay, so that's in there nice and tight. Now I have a, a square taper crank that I'm going to be using, and so I can test this, fit this, put the chain over there, just get it out of the way there. And so I'll slide this on there like this, and I'm going to use a rubber hammer to kind of just tap that on there for right now. Okay, now I'm going to uh, measure the, the chain line, see how close I am, and with the uh, ruler here between the two chain rings, I can measure that, and that looks to be around... 43 millimeters there, and if I go against the inside of the small chain ring there, that looks to be around 37 millimeters. So that's actually pretty close to the original uh, chain line there. Now, you don't, uh, if, if you're not exact, don't stress about it, but if you're like within a millimeter or two, that's generally close enough. But you want to try to get it as close as you can. Now I want to install the non-drive side cup. And this is plastic. If it's plastic, you don't want to use grease in there. If it's uh, metal, then then do uh, put a little bit of grease on the threads. But this is plastic, so I'm not going to be using any uh, grease in there. And I want to thread this on and make sure that I don't cross thread it. It's just screw on pretty smoothly. And it's the same tool on this side. And then tighten it in. And then tighten it in all the way that it'll go. And don't over tighten it with the plastic because you don't want to strip all the threads out. But uh, it should be in there pretty tight. And so there, I got that going. Okay, now I want to check for a chain ring wobble. And whenever you uh, mount like a uh, uh, a crank onto a uh, square taper uh, spindle. Sometimes 
uh, the four directions are not always machined exactly the same. So what you might find is as you rotate the crank, the chain ring might wobble in or out. So what you can do is uh, look at the uh, chain ring down and compare it against the, uh, the cage of the derailleur and see if it moves in and out. If it does move in and out, you know, if it's like stay straight, then you're okay. If it does move in and out a little bit, then you might pop the chain ring of the crank off and try it in the other three directions on the, the square spindle and see if one of them uh, works a little bit better. But this seems uh, to be a pretty good position. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this on there. I've got some bolts here and I'm gonna screw these in here like this. And you might have like a 14 millimeter bolt or nut in there. And these are like little hex ones on here that I got. So, and usually what I do is I just kind of tighten it on there. And, oh, and never ever use grease on the square spindle when you're putting these things on. Just leave it nice and clean because they're held on by friction. And these bolts basically just kind of press them on there. And so I just kind of tighten it on like that. And now I'll mount the chain onto the, the small chain ring there that the front railer is lined up with. And turn that. And that seems to go okay there. Now I'm ready to install the non-drive side crank here, or arm here. And that will go on 180 degrees from the uh, drive side crank. And so I'll put this bolt in there, get this started. And tighten this on. Okay, like that. Okay, now I'm ready to test the shifting here. Uh, whenever you install a new crank set, that's not even going from a cotter to a square. If you're just going from a square to a square, um, you're changing to just a new crank set, it's possible that the chain line is going to just change a little bit and you may have to readjust the front derailleur. Uh, but I'm going to test this here and go up to the big gear, down the little one, up the big one, and actually the shifting seems to be working pretty good as is. Um, but you might need to adjust that. I'm not going to cover that in this video. I have other videos to cover uh, adjusting the front derailleur. But anyway, that seems to work pretty well. Just need to put some pedals on it and I'm all set to go. I hope you found this useful or interesting. If you did, please click like on my video. I always appreciate getting likes on my videos and it helps me out. If you're not subscribed to my channel, click the big yellow button and you'll see new videos as they come out and I'm always coming out with new videos. And I'm also over on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. Go over there, like that page. And I post a lot of stuff over there. Anyway, that is how to change from a cottered crank to a square taper crank. Thanks for watching.